The authority has a unique structure on how it governs its personnel and policy, not to mention a diverse culture and employment that expands on them within their divisions. The divisions are the primary components of what makes the authority as a whole function. They are the fragmented components of what makes an organizational structure work, a collective chess piece that works together to protect and serve their kings and queens. So how do these divisions work? Where do they come from, and more importantly, who runs them? For starters, how divisions work is through various departments and subcomponents under their jurisdiction that often coordinate with each other left and right. Without proper coordination, governance and functionality for the authority would almost be impossible. Now as for its historical aspect, it is, well, ambiguous. We don't know much about the divisions entirely as the information about their history is a bit scarce. But what we do know is that the divisions were set up some time around the authority's foundation in 1834, after they split from the Vatican. And yes, the authority was part of the Vatican before their foundation in 1834, but that is a story for another time. Let's start off with the research division. Research is responsible for all aspects of research-related affairs, from experimentation to analysis of RPCs. We have the Office of Analysis and Science. I would say it is the forefront of the research division as they are a major component that does all aspects of fields of studies, from cryptozoobiology to the more complicated aspects of science like quantum physics. And like quantum physics, observing and predicting RPCs, let alone understanding their functionality and physiology, is one of the more difficult works for top researchers within the OAS. While it is a field of complication, and if not an easy way to meet certain death, their dedication to researching RPCs is one of the great importance of the research division. Next is we have the Anomaly Experimentation Team. Not exactly a department, but rather a conglomerate of teams that are tasked with their specific projects that research and, as the name suggests, test RPCs. They are the component that studies the properties of an anomaly, explore the limits of it, and discover any beneficiary use for the authority. Unlike any of the components or departments under research, they possess one or several anomalies under their jurisdiction that is above their normal work quota. And finally, the Bureau of Acquisition. There's a reason why the Bureau of Acquisition is the last thing from research that I want to talk about, and let me explain why. The Bureau of Acquisition is a bureau that accumulates non-centralized departments by which they are only held together by their task of fabricating and obtaining resources for the authority. As a bureau consisting of non-centralized departments, their entire structure is complicated and, in the words of the description of this department, chaotic. Thus, it is almost impossible to understand almost all areas of the BOA, each department having their own culture, tasks, beliefs, and sometimes their own methodology. However, despite the chaotic nature of which the BOA is unusually structured, their efficiency is without a question effective. This is a department that prides itself on rich histories and accomplishments and improve their worthiness to the authority. Now let's proceed with the protection division. This is the security service arm of the authority, handling all forms of threats from affairs concerning internal and external. Among the first components of this division is the protectorate. They are a relatively new department that was recently added onto protection. They are the emergency services arm that respond to immediate disaster, emergency, or catastrophe caused by an anomaly. What makes the protection interesting are two things. They are the only component within the authority that actively interact with civilians on a daily basis, and are the main recruiters of the authority by giving those who have been exposed to an anomaly or say by a protectorate member a chance to be recruited into the authority. Up next, the Authority Extraterrestrial Defense Force. They are the primary component of the authority that handles all aspects of space-related affairs. But unlike space agencies such as the National Aeronautics and Space Administration or the European Space Agency, the AEDF operates high-speed transport across the solar system, basically spaceships. Now they're not exactly perfect as these vessels don't have FTL capabilities or are they that effective. You see, the vessels that the AEDF operates are very old that go back as far as the 1900s. And of course, for classified reasons, I'm not allowed to discuss further anything including about the AEDF vessel themselves or their history, because well, the information about them is a bit iffy at the moment. Thirdly, the Authority Central Intelligence. To describe the ACI, they are basically the Authority's intelligence arm, or in other words, our version of the United States Central Intelligence Agency. 
They are the intelligence sector that handles all forms of security and intelligence related issues, from cyber to espionage. They are also responsible for dissemination and obstruction campaigns including the apprehension and interrogation of persons of interest to the authority. They cooperate with other agencies to ensure any trail work left by the authority are promptly dealt with. And the last component of the protection division is mobile specialized teams. MSTs are a collective designation to elements and groups that specialize in various functions. What a lot of people tend to misinterpret about MSTs is that they are a tactical strike team or special forces kind of like element, which isn't entirely true. There are MSTs that are dedicated to solely researching RPCs or containing an anomaly that does not require heavy armaments. Some of the best and brightest mobile specialized teams include Sierra 8, Sundowners, Foxtrot 4, Prey, and Echo 8, Plague Doctors. And finally, the Containment Division. Unlike research or protection that spearhead the goals and objectives of the authority, such as researching the anomaly and protecting the anomaly, containment does, well, the containing aspect of the authority. They are the people responsible for containing, establishing proper procedure and protocols, including constructing the structure of which the RPC is to be contained within. Within the containment division, we have the Triform Axle. The Triform Axle actually is the amalgamation of three components consisting of the engineering component, biomechanical module, and the protocol laboratory. The engineering component is the department responsible for the construction and upkeep of all authority sites worldwide, including those stationed within planetary bodies and maintain infrastructure. The biomechanical module is a coalition consisting of various engineering groups that provide some of the best utility and defense technology. And the protocol laboratory is a specialized research and bureaucratic department that is responsible for creating effective containment procedures for RPCs. Their personnel are diverse and are a mix of scientists, engineers, and liaison officers. Staff within ProLab work with specialists from those within the Research Division and Protection Division. And outside of the Triform Axle, there is the Authority Security Force. The Authority Security Force is the Authority's primary security and defense force responsible for protecting all properties, facilities, and personnel of the RPC Authority. They serve as a rapid response force in the event of an incursion, whether it be internal and external threat within Authority installations. On the more pragmatic side of the containment division when it comes to unhappy work standards, we have the maintenance union. Now yes, it is unusual to have an organization like the authority to have a union for maintenance personnel, but it is something that many within the Presidium believe to be a necessity for law and order. The union is a department responsible for general representation of miscellaneous site staff ranging from cooks, janitors, low-level technicians, and logistic personnel. And lastly, to ensure independence from national governments and rival organizations, the Authority needs a rapid secure communication and that is where the Department of Communication comes in. The Communications Department is the more technical aspect of the Authority that oversees maintenance and construction of the Authority's communication network. They serve as the technical consultants for every facility worldwide, coordinating with the engineering component and obfuscating records whenever a surveyor or a diver discovers a cable where it should have not existed. With each division explained, along with their components, now who technically runs these divisions? Divisional leadership for each is led by a single person, elected to that position by personnel. The divisions have their own leaders with a unique code name. Research is led by the scholar, protection by the commander, and containment by the architect. These three senior members are from their prospective divisions, but are also members of the directorate. It is unclear if these three divisions, unlike their other GD colleagues, weigh any more influence than them. But whatever the case may be, the divisions are a vital asset to the authority and the functionality as a whole. Whether it be the research, the protection, or the containment that they provide, they are there whenever a situation needs to be taken care of.